If you live overseas and you're selling a property in Australia, you may need to deal with a capital gains tax or CGT withholding tax for foreign residents. Hi, I'm Jared Rogers from Beyond Accountancy. In this video, I'll discuss who is affected by the tax, how and when you pay it, and whether you're entitled to a refund of this tax. You might be entitled to a partial refund, a full refund, or no refund at all. It depends whether you've made a capital gain on your property and how much that gain is. So let me run through how it works and what you can do to manage this tax. So what are the basics of this tax? Well, it applies to somebody who's a foreign resident. If you are a resident, you simply apply for a CGT withholding clearance certificate. This tells the ATO you don't need to pay the 12.5% tax. It applies when a property is sold for more than $750,000. If you don't get a clearance certificate, even if you're a resident, you will still need to pay the tax. You need to get the paperwork in order. But today we're talking about how this applies to non-residents who are liable for this tax. The simplest way I think to understand this tax is to think of it as a down payment. So the capital gains withholding is not a tax, it's a deposit or a down payment towards a future tax bill. And whether you need to pay that deposit or that down payment really depends on what you expect the final capital gains tax bill to be. And you'll work that out when you lodge your tax return. So the way that That property transactions work in Australia is, is that you have a contract date at which time the buyer will pay a 10% deposit and then there'll be a settlement date where they pay the other 90% and any loans and other debts are cleared before the property is transferred into the new owner's name. So when do you pay the tax? Well you pay this 12.5% withholding tax at settlement so your solicitor or conveyancer will take that money out of the sale process you'd otherwise be entitled to. So do you have to pay it? Well, yes, unless you do a variation, which I'll come to later on. Another common question is, can I get this money back? Well, you might be able to get some or all of this money back. And you normally do that by lodging your tax return. So if you sold a property today, so it's currently March 2023, that falls in the tax year ending 30 June 2023. So you, if you paid the 12.5% withholding, you'll be able to claim a credit for that on your 2023 tax return. The ATO will deduct any taxes owing from that amount and you'll get the net, the net amount back. So let's look at an example of how this might work. So any income you earn, including a capital gain, is all combined together. So there's no separate rate of capital gains tax in Australia. The tax rate you'll pay will be the normal income tax rates. So if your total income, so your rent, your capital gains, or your Australian accessible income, if it's under $120,000, you simply pay 32.5%. If it's over $120,000, the amount above 120 is taxed at a higher rate, and then at 180, it goes up again, even higher. Let's work through an example. Let's say you bought the property for $800,000, and then you've sold it for $900,000. So you made a capital gain of $100,000. And let's say for simplicity, your other Australian income was $10,000 worth of net rental profit that you made from the 1st of July until you sold the property. So what would the capital gains tax be on this transaction? Well, the capital gains tax, as I said, is not a separate tax. So we've got to work out what would your tax be if there was no capital gain? Well, it would simply be $3,250. But if we add the capital gain, your total tax bill is $35,750. And that would mean the capital gains tax amount is 32,500. So in this scenario, the amount that you will eventually pay in tax is only 4% of the sale price. Whereas the withholding tax is 12.5% of the sale price. And this actually will come even lower because your capital gain isn't just the sale price and the purchase price, 
you also need to include something like uh, factors like purchase costs, holding costs, capital improvements and selling costs. So purchase costs, we're talking mainly about government charges. So the government charges on an $800,000 property in Victoria would be $45,000 in total. There also might be some legal fees, looking at about $1,500 for these normally. And when you sell a property, you can normally expect to your total cost to be something like 2.5% of the, of the sale price. So look what's happened to our $100,000 capital gain. Yes, the property's gone up by $100,000, but when you factor in $46,000 of purchase cost and $22,000 of sale cost, the capital gain is actually much lower. It's only $30,000 and the bill's much smaller. So the amount of tax you'll pay is only 2% of the sale price. Let's do another example. What if we made a much bigger profit on that property? So we'll take the same example, the same purchase cost, but we're going to say we sold it for $1.4 million. Then even with the selling costs and the purchase cost, we've got a capital gain of $518,000. That's going to be a capital gains tax amount of nearly $216,000 and that's 16% of the purchase price. So you've got a choice to make. Do you pay the 12.5% tax or do you do a variation form and ask the ATO to allow you to withhold a smaller amount? Well, you can see here in the spreadsheet, which I'll put in as a link in the description of this video, by the way, so you can use, use this yourself. But in the second scenario, where we've made a large capital gain, the capital gains tax is the equivalent of 16% of the sale price. So 16% is more than the 12.5%. So there's no point us doing a variation. Variations are only if you want to lower the withholding to something below 12.5%, right? In this case, it's going to be more. So how would it work? So it'd be two stages. Firstly, you'd pay the $175,000 at the time of sale, and then the remainder of that $216,000, you would pay that when you lodge your 2023 tax return. What about for the lower capital gain? So there's, again, there's, there's two ways to do this. You can choose to do a variation or you can just pay the tax. Let's say we pay the tax. So we've paid $112,500 of tax at the time of sale. We end up with a tax bill, including capital gains and rent of $13,000. So we're going to end up with a tax refund on the 2023 tax return. And that's going to be, which will be $99,000. And so you just need to wait until at the earliest, July 2023, to lodge your return and get the excess back. But what if you don't want to have that $99,000 sitting in the government's pocket from the time of sale until at least July when you get the money back. Well, that's when we can do a variation. If the capital gain tax you expect to pay is under 12.5%, then use, you can use this number, this 2%, as the very withholding figure. So if you go to the ATO website, it discusses the different aspects of the withholding tax, including variation. So you click on the variations link and it explains a few things that you can and can't do. And then click on the application form here. So I've started an application form just to make this a bit quicker. So um, vendor is the seller of the asset. So let's assume that I'm the person selling it rather than me lodging this as a tax agent. Who's a contact person? Well, that will be me and I'll put my um, contact number and we've got to put the vendor's details. It's much better if you put the tax file number in. So you're not required to, but it's going to be a lot quicker to have this application process if you put your TFN in the application. And let's say we've got a guy, um, John Citizen. He lives in Hong Kong. And that's his date of birth. And again, I'll put John's phone number. And let's say he lives in, in Hong Kong at that address. We've sold the property today and we plan to settle two months from now. And what are we selling? Well, it's real estate. There's a couple of other ones, but mostly it's, it's going to be real estate. And the property you're selling is one Flinders Street, Melbourne. There is 
portfolio and lot numbers and plan numbers and things like that that will help the ATO identify the property more quickly, your conveyancer or solicitor can help you out with these details. What type of tenancy? There's, if you just own it outright, it's a sole purchaser. If you own it with other people, again, you can ask your solicitor if it's joint tenants or tenants in common, they'll be able to tell you which one it is. Let's say for this example, it's 100% ownership. So why are we varying? So this top option is the most appropriate one. The tax liability from this asset is less than 12% of the gross proceeds. So what rate are we going to use? Well, we use our spreadsheet to work that out and we're going to say it's 2%. And then the all the details of the sale are just the details from this spreadsheet. So the expected sale price, the acquisition cost, that's your purchase cost, so 46, double six eight. Expected cost of sale, we had it 22,500. Ownership costs is the cost of owning the property over time. If the property was a rental property, all of these costs like owners, corporation, council rates, interest on mortgage, they would have already been claimed as rental deductions, so we can't claim them again for capital gains. That's why I've left that blank. And capital improvements, if you have improved the property, like done major renovations, you can add that there. Um, let's say for simplicity, that doesn't apply. The capital gains discount. Now that's an interesting one. So I'm going to assume for the example that this person was a non-resident the whole time he owned his property. So I'll put nil for that. And that just helps the ATO verify um, what the capital gains is. You can add attachments. I've never done that in the past. Um, so we'll skip that one. And then you declare that it's correct. Do the good old capture code. And then submit. I won't submit that obviously because that's that's, that's um, fictitious information. You can print the entire form, which I recommend that you do, just prior to lodging. You can probably print it afterwards, but you never know. You don't want to lose all that information, and just print that as a PDF. So that's how you do a variation. So how do you apply this to your own situation? Well, let's look at it as a decision tree. So firstly. Is the sale price under 750000 If yes, then no tax is required and you don't need to think about it any further. If it's more than 750000 then you consider, am I a resident? If you are a resident of Australia for tax purposes, then you need to obtain a clearance certificate and give this to your solicitor or conveyancer so that the ATO knows that you don't need to pay the 12.5% withholding tax. But what if you're not a resident, you're a foreign resident? Well, then you've got to work out, will my capital gains tax liability be more than 12.5%? If you don't know, you just have to pay the tax. But if you can work it out, like I've done in the example with the spreadsheet, and the amount is over 12.5%, then just pay the 12.5% tax now at the time of settlement and pay the rest when you do your tax return. But if the answer to that question is no, so your CGT liability is expected to be under 12.5%, that's when you do the variation form. So the first two decisions are pretty straightforward. That third and final decision point, you need to know what your capital gains tax amount is going to be before you can decide whether to just pay the 12.5 or do the variation. So I hope that was helpful. It's a relatively involved set of rules. Um, at first, it might seem simple. You just pay 12.5% when you sell, but you just need to make sure that if you've got a small capital gain or even a capital loss, that you're not paying that tax unnecessarily. And that's where the variation form comes in. So if you need help from us in preparing a variation or estimating your capital gains tax position, then feel free to get in touch. I'll put our contact details on the screen now. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye.